up guys? We are here today at Curated. What is our DNA? It has to be the Lamborghini Countach. So we've got the Periscope First 1974 LP400S. These cars were made from 1977 to 1980, 81. And then the introduction of the 5000S. This was a very, very similar car to the LP400S low body. And then early, early 1985, brings about the QV, or famously known as the downdraft. Um, this car has like a cult following. Everybody that I talk to about Countaches that is trying to learn, or they're talking to historians, says, what about the downdraft? I wanna know more about the downdraft. It's the highest horsepower, um, the largest motor of any of the Countach examples. Um, if you look and start reading through history and magazines and, and sort of all these road and track tests, they were about the downdraft. Car that produces almost 500 horsepower. It has these incredible downdraft carbureted velocity stacks. That's where it gets the name from. And for me, it's that famous 60 Minutes uh, TV special that featured Valentino Balboni doing a insane burnout in what was the Lamborghini Countach downdraft. So this was the first, let's face it, 200 mile per hour supercar. Um, it was featured in posters, it was featured in magazines. Now about 610 of these cars were made in total. 1985, I think the first cars were February of March of 1985, and then they ended production in late 1988, which was also known as a 1988 and a half, which we'll get to the 1988 and a half cars. Of this 610, let's call it, and we're still doing all the research, we're running VIN numbers, we're running Carfax, let's call it 220 of those cars or so were actually brought to the US, but they were brought in a fuel injection specification. Now this is where you have two groups of Countach enthusiasts, historians, collectors, that sort of differ in opinion. The fuel injected cars, it's documented that they did have a lower horsepower. Uh, majority of the cars featured these um, massive uh, front rubber bumpers and these rear uh, rubber sort of bumperettes. Um, and these are the cars that honestly sort of struggle to sell. They sort of haven't found their home. In many ways, they're actually pretty rare, um, but they're, they're a little slower. Um, I, I think with the US emissions and the catalytic converters, uh, I, I think it does not help their performance at all. And collectors today are constantly asking for the European version of the downdraft. So if the US got, let's say 220, 200 of these fuel injected cars, the rest of the world, what's left today, let's call it 380, 370 cars. We're constantly trying to research this information, making the downdraft a pretty rare car, but even more rare are about rumored 1520 downdraft carbureted US cars. These were cars that were imported by Lamborghini North America, uh, Joe Nastasi. Um, Joe Nastasi is extremely responsible for bringing Lamborghini to the US in a big way, um, and in many ways, responsible for, for seeing Lamborghini through until the anniversary and, and the Diablo years and creating the hype in the US market. So of all the calls that we've gotten in the past six months, eight months that we've had Countach's on the market, the one car that everybody asks about is what? The downdraft. Why? In the past year, it's been released by historian Joe Saki that the downdraft is the only Countach and pretty much one of the only Lamborghinis that was ever certified for FIA racing and specifically FIA Group B homologation. The same homologation class of what? The Porsche 959, the Ferrari 288 GTO, and many, many more iconic supercars. So 1980 and a half, Lamborghini makes a few modifications to those late cars. They actually all have the side skirts uh, on the bottom of the car. So it's, it's uh, sort of right here. They have these like sort of Testarossa style strakes. And then in the interior, the AC units were actually updated to like a digital button sort of unit. Um, the LP5000S cars, 
the QV cars all have a um, old school sort of Italian style AC switch uh, unit um, in the interior. So now we're talking about pricing, we're talking about market. Uh, I've seen downdrafts sell as much as almost one million dollars. Um, I've heard of rumors of cars trading between 600,000 and 900,000. Um, whereas the fuel injected US cars with the bumpers, um, I've seen these cars trade anywhere from 200,000 up to as much as 550,000 for very, very low mileage examples. Um, now we have the anniversary. Now the anniversary in many ways is looked at as sort of like the, the, the stepchild of the group. It was the highest production. Um, it was a very, very different look from the early cars. Um, they look a little bulky, they look a little bigger, but this was the car that was designed by Horacio Pagani, obviously of Pagani fame. These cars have different wheels, they have a different interior. They have almost in sort of the body features, and you'll see this in some of our clips, the, the air intakes are different, the front bumper, the rear bumper. Very, very cool cars. Um, I have to say, I love a very clean European anniversary. Uh, no US front bumper, no rear wing. Uh, I think it, it's, a, it's a great example of a car. Um, these cars today, I've seen them sell anywhere from 250,000 up to, uh, let's call it as much as 550,000. Yes, they were the highest production of all the Countaches. They're still a very special car. I mean, imagine this was the car that Lamborghini used to celebrate 25 years of the company. Um, I think over time they'll become more desirable. Um, I think as, as everything rises, I think they'll all Countach examples will go up. Um, anniversary, the last cars were produced in 1990. Um, these were actually Canadian cars. There was actually one or two US cars produced in 1990. Um, I've actually gotten to an argument with my dad about this. He says, nope, no US cars were produced after 1989. Um, We'll prove that shortly, hopefully. I'm chasing a, a US spec 1990 car. Um, and then obviously the Diablo came into production in 1990. Um, to me, the Countach is the most iconic car ever made. Um, hopefully there'll be more historians documenting the history. As time goes on, we're trying to do our best to record every single serial number, anything we can. Um, I could talk all day about Countaches. Um, hopefully I've been able to sort of step-by-step step sort of demonstrate production numbers, pricing, etc. Um, I think eventually one day all Countaches will start at $1 million. Thank you so much for watching guys. Please subscribe to the channel. It's in our DNA. We'll have more Countach content. We'll also have more content about a ton of other incredible vintage supercars.